more people coming in. Let's get started. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Amir Michael. Uh, currently, I work at Salesforce. Uh, I'm one of the founders of Open Compute a few years ago. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, started as a small project within Facebook. Uh, a lot of my learnings around best practices around the data center came from my time at Google. And today, we have a really unique opportunity to speak with uh, people at Facebook and at Google who are driving a lot of the innovation within Open Compute. The rack, as you know, has been a key differentiator within Open Compute. It's what brings a lot of the innovation that Open Compute has to offer. And last year, I'm sure a lot of people noticed Google joined Open Compute and contributed a 48 volt rack, which is now the third evolution of the rack design within Open Compute. So today we get a chance to have a discussion uh, with engineers from both Facebook and Google about some of the innovations and the motivations behind this 48 volt rack. So I'm going to call up our panelists now um, from Hive, Facebook, and Google. Please come up to the stage. So why don't we grab the microphone, give everyone a chance to come up, and then we'll just go down and have everyone introduce themselves one at a time. And as I was reminded, hold the mic close to your mouth. Uh, Douglas Bone, Hive Solutions. Uh, Tim Lee, Mechanical Engineer at Google. Hamid Kehani, Power Engineer at Google. Uh, my name is Xing, I'm a, a Team Manager for uh, Power from Google. I'm Steve Mills. I'm a mechanical engineer at Facebook and the OpenRack uh, project co-lead. I'm Mike Lau, mechanical engineering manager from Google. Uh, Ming Chen Shi, a power engineer from Facebook. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, everyone. So let's go back to the beginning. 48 volts was something that was a bit of a surprise last year. Let's talk about some of the motivations behind that. Why 48 volts? What drove that type of design decision? Oh, well, I, I can take probably the, the first question. Uh, um, you know, uh, I think first of all, uh, 48 volt is uh, still what we call a safe voltage from compliance point of view. Um, it's relatively a high uh, voltage uh, for power distribution. Uh, compared to a traditional, let's say, 12-volt power distribution, right? So uh, I think apparently the power distribution loss is much lower, um, especially um, at higher power rating. Uh, so there's, uh, if you look at, you know, industry, right, um, there's clearly there's a trend of increasing power in various applications like GPUs, you know, supercomputer, um, and if you look, and even uh, some ASICs from, for networking switches. And if you look at you know, generation to generations, the power is increasing dramatically um, from generation to generation, right? So 48 volt becoming more attractive when the, the power is higher, right? That's the first information. And secondly, I guess, you know, when you, you see the implementation that uh, Hive put together, um, it's actually, 48 volt simplify a lot of power component designs. Uh, you know, you look at the bus bar, you look at the rectifiers, you look at the way that they integrate the battery into the whole system. Um, you know, you also look at, the, for example, the connectors and the interfaces from the power system to all the way to the payload. You know, it's actually simplify a lot of power component designs. Um, and I think maybe thirdly, uh, probably the most important one, actually, uh, Google you know, started to introduce 48 volt to uh, data center a few years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, there's one technology, which is what we call um, 48 volt two point of load uh, technology, which enabled a very high efficient, uh, you know, very, um, uh, very high efficiency in terms of uh, uh, power conversion from 48 volt to, six, to point of load. And this technology, I think we believe is, you know, material enough, is uh, reliable, it's with multi-sources, so that we actually share it with, with industry. Um, and I think uh, we believe that with this technology, you know, if you look around, uh, especially in the high power, 
Um, and when you look at the, the conversion efficiency from you know AC all the way to the point of load, you really have some you know interest uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know high efficient um, rack. And, and I think that's kind of the, the the way that I see why we are proposing 48 volt. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? Uh, so one of the thing that uh, is kind of an advantage to the 48 volt versus the 12 volt is due to the reduced uh, I squared R loss that you're going to see on the bus bar, it gives you a little bit more flexibility of where you put the power shelf in the rack and still maintain your uh, efficiency, right? You can put it at the top of the rack or the middle of the rack um, and still keep your I squared R losses. Uh, so a little bit more flexibility when you're laying out the configuration at the rack level. Yep. So, so efficiency one of the motivations. Um, efficiency is always important as far as your overall cost to run the gear, one of the other things we talked about is potentially more density. Do you see things outside of the rack driving the need for that? What, what do you see, you know, what are the other motivations driving the need to, to be able to do that if you need, right? So I can take this question. So density is actually just one of the effects of going to 48 volts. So 48 volts will get you the efficiency, but density is really dependent on what your workloads are gonna look like, how you're gonna lay out your data centers, so if you want high density, if you're, let's say you're in the high performance computing area and you want your machines to be very close together, maybe density is something that you would really want. But if that's not something that's desired or uh, good for your total cost of ownership, then the density just allows you to place something that's relatively small into a larger area. Yeah, that's probably a, you know, the, the area for more innovation, right? You know, when you look at the kind of the demo in, in, on, on the floor, you know, the, for a, let's say, 36 kilowatt um, uh, rack, right? You know, the battery taking three RU space of the rack, you know, rectifier taking two or three. Um, I mean, if you can really, if you can squeeze the size and take all this space out and use it for server and, you know, for computing, I, I, I can see clearly that's a, a, a huge uh, win, right? That makes sense. So. We've sort of established the need for something like 48 volts. We've talked about some of the advantages. When you think about the actual design of the rack today and what went into that, obviously efficiency is one, but what were some of the other design goals behind the rack? Oh, so some of the design goals behind the physical aspects of the rack is there was already an existing uh, design that was out there. I know uh, there are many customers who have started adopting it. So we wanted to look at this rack and treat it as a rack as a system and have modular components where you can migrate going from 12 volt or going up to 48 volts. We've kept the bus bar locations in the same place, except especially when we go to 48 volts, you probably only need one bus bar down the center of the rack. Uh, and Steve has already mentioned, you can put your power supplies in different locations. Uh, the other part that we did introduce within the uh, open rack spec V2 was we did recommend two different depths. And one of the reasons is uh, you can just Depending on your payload, you can design it differently from a thermal cooling standpoint. So we have a shallower depth and a deeper depth, and the deeper depth is what was uh, shown last year. But this year, we have one where uh, the payload sizes for the deeper one is 800 millimeters for the payload for the deep rack, right. and the newer version is 660 millimeters. So, and ideally, they both share the same power system, so we design it as a module, so even though you have two different depths of rack, you share the same power components. Yeah. So flexibility is one, uh, good point to touch on. Any, anything else, what about economic considerations? What about uh, vanity free, right? Uh, obviously, you, know, you don't have provisions for doors on these racks and things like that. Were any of those taken into consideration in the design? Actually, there are provisions for doors. If you look, at, if you look closely at some of the racks, there are uh, mounting positions at the front of each rack. So if you needed a security door, you needed a, any additional cable management, they are part of the rack designs, but Great. I think some of them are prototypes, so some will have it, some will not. Yeah. Any other thoughts on that? Um, I'd like to point, is it on? Uh, I'd like to point some other uh, benefits of the 48 volt system. <clears throat> it's just not the bus bar lower current, it's also the, vo the bus voltage uh, on the 48 volt, uh, the uh, topology that we allow actually wider volta voltage uh, variation on the 48 volt term. So it allows more flexibility and not a very tight uh, 48 and 12 volt uh, 
versus 48 volts. So your 48 volt can have a wider voltage range where rectifier design would be much easier. And then the bus bar, you don't need actually to think about a very tight voltage drop, inductance drop, and the bus bar, very easy bus bar design. You could have just one only bus bar domain and then can have the rectifier and battery either on the top or bottom. The other thing is actually the battery integration. So on the, <clears throat> on the 12 volt, uh, you can have either a centralized battery system uh, or maybe distributed to the rack. It's, it, would be, it could be different, uh, I mean, uh, to, uh, b battery topology, it probably would be 48 volt, then you need another converter to con convert it down to 12 volt. But on 48 volt system, you can directly hook the battery using O-ring fare to the bus. Very easy design, so you can save some power loss and then some cost also on the battery integration. Can I make a point on the batteries also? Because I think that uh, easy to use battery technology in the rack allows customers to really adopt it. Because I think that's an area where even with, uh, even today, aside from some very large customers who've been very innovative in this area, I don't think customers in general are taking advantage of rack level uh, battery backup. And I think that's a shame because people are building data centers with a lot of expensive backup capability that induces inefficiency, inefficiency and complexity. So I think with this rack, one of the advantages are, is you mentioned the efficiency of the battery backup solution. Anything that, that we can do to make it easier for customers to adopt that, I think is a real win. Because I think in the long run, that really helps de, um, decomplicate the data center. Yeah, I think any step in, in reducing barriers to entry of adoption of efficient backup systems is good. And it is a bit of a chicken and egg. Not everyone has their own facility they designed from scratch, but hopefully with something like this, it can start getting people to think about it more because it is that much easier. Yeah, maybe just one thing to add is, uh, you know, 48 volt system is not really a completing using, right? You know, telecom area has been using uh, uh, minus 48 volt uh, for a long time. And uh, actually one of the key, uh, you know, uh, I think key interest of using 48 volt system is actually we can leverage a lot of you know, things that we, we learned in telco area. One of the examples is the rectifiers, right? You know, they're very, um, when very dense, you know, high efficiency, and, and that's just back to your point about, uh, you know, economy. Thank you. So a lot of the audience is coming from a different perspective, right? They're not large scale operators. They don't have custom data centers and they're here to try and understand how do some of these best practices apply to them? Right? And the big question is, for, for them to adopt, there needs to be some momentum behind a platform. They don't necessarily have um, the right business means to go and drive their own custom design, so they're looking to follow on the, the heels of those innovators. And so you know, that means volume behind a particular product generally makes it attractive for others to adopt. So the question is, what are the plans for internal adoption both at Facebook and at Google? What are the timeframes for that? I, I think the, you know, uh, Google joined, uh, as you mentioned, Google joined uh, OCP, you know, last year. And I think we kind of sharing our practice around 48 volt. And, and I think really the hope is, you know, with this practice and we actually build a, a you know, we have close uh, collaboration with Facebook to build a, a open rack, uh power specification so that we can actually share this practice and, you know, uh, put something, some standard over there, put some specification over there so that all the suppliers, you know, yeah, through OCP can design their stuff, uh, you know, into OCP and the customers can use it, right? So, you know, really to, to build the kind of ecosystem, right? That's really the goal instead of, you know, when, uh, you know particularly for Google or Facebook, I think uh, we probably need to pass the answer probably to... Uh, uh, yeah. So one more thing to add is, We've, we've been doing a lot of 48 volt designs within our own data centers. Mm -hmm. So it's a very much proven technology that we've run for several generations. Ming Chu, Steve, do you have any, any perspective from Facebook? So I mean, one, one thing that we've, we've seen historically um, is that anytime we can get the specs out into the community early, right? We, we end up having a lot more runway to get a lot more innovation and, and a lot more suppliers on board earlier in the process, um, which is uh, you know great for everybody, right? And, and um, 
So that, that was also part of, of our goal, right, was to try and get that out in front of everybody pretty much as, as soon as we possibly could and get that feedback early from the community. Got it. Thanks. Let's, let's talk about some, some details. Before we do that, let's, let's talk about a high level. I've, some of the fundamental differences between a traditional rack with AC power distribution, what we've known as the 12-volt series of racks, and then the 48-volt uh, rack, which is new. You know, the question is, is obviously technically what are the, some of the efficiency differences you would see, but just at a high level, why would someone choose one versus the other? Um. I, I think in general, as what we mentioned, right, you know, when the, the power is high, you know, 48 volt, which is a relatively high voltage power distribution is more attractive. Um, and really, when you talk about implementation options, you know, theoretically, you can pay more to get a very high efficient, let's say, 12 volt, even a 12 volt rectifiers, right? You could put, let's say, three bus bar there to get, uh, to lower the power distribution. Right, so it's, uh, this kind of question is more really related to how you implement your solution, right? Um, so it's, it's probably challenging to get a concrete answer to say, you know, which one is it's, it's more, um, to, to get the specific number. Instead, I think uh, we, we do see, especially in, in, um, uh, with, with the increasing uh, power in the rack side, you know, it's becoming more attractive in 48 volt system. Can you give almost approximate efficiency gains going from one design to the other? I mean, are we talking about 10% difference between 12 and 48? What, is, what does that number look like approximately? Um, I think in uh, last year when we, we joined, um, you know, OCP and uh, my previous boss actually Nia, did some presentation. We actually put some, you know, we did some study. We put some efficiency numbers there just for reference, you know, feel free to kind of go to that link and, and click to see what's the, the exact number that's with my proposal. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Um, so more practically, so let's say that this is interesting, someone would like to adopt. Where can someone go? Obviously, you can't just swipe your credit card at the Hive booth and buy a rack, but where, where would one go to, to, to engage in this type of a solution? Uh, well, I'm sure our sales force will be happy to sell them at the booth. No, uh, Hive uh, would be is will be providing these racks. Uh, it's a long sales cycle because this type of infrastructure needs to be well understood in terms of what the customers want. But we're more uh, than eager to work with customers to figure out how these racks and what particularly what options with the rack and the servers will work best. So. Uh, please, please approach a representative from Hive Solutions if uh, you're interested in, uh, in using this uh, technology. I should point out that these racks are at the prototype stage, so the, the 48 volt open rack will be available likely in the second half of the year. So that means that now's the time to start discussing how it gets deployed, what goes into it, and those kinds of things. Yeah, and for some of the 48 volt uh, equipment, um, we've seen a lot of early engagement on there, and. Uh, Really, just encourage you to kind of walk the floor and talk to some of the some of the suppliers out there to see what's coming up for this 48 volt to point to point of load technology. Um, from the uh, foundation standpoint, um, one of the things that they showed today was that uh, there will be um, extension to the website, right, where you'll be able to go and look at all the OCP approved designs when that. Uh, um, whether OCP inspired, OCP accepted. Um, at this point, um, we haven't uh, accepted any, any product yet against those specifications, but as we go forward, we've already got suppliers that are interested in making those. So once those are uh, achieve one of those designations, you should be able to go to the OCP website and click on the, the buy button and, and get that kind of information from there once it's ready. Yeah, this is, the, you know, well, we're adding this in the foot hateable, it's just add one options. That does uh, not mean, you know, that the travel, you know, travel is now is still, you know, the used by the, you know, the, the a lot of users. So the user can get the one option to to see, you know, what your application you need travel solution or need the footable solution. Yeah. So we're running towards the end of our time here. Uh, one last question: For we had traditional racks, 12 volts third generation, 48 volts. What's next? What do you see changing in the data center, on the compute side? What are, as you're, you're doing this 48 volt design, you're always creating a list of things you wanna do better next time. What, what are your thoughts there? Uh, 
so from a trend standpoint, right, you'll see um, uh, from the keynotes that we saw, right, you're going to see more and more of AI, um, GP, GPU type systems coming online. So you're going to see uh, an increased level of, of density, right? So there's definitely some, you know, potentially some advantage, right, to those type of trends uh, from a 48 volt rack. Um, so you can kind of see us extending into that. Um, from the foundation standpoint, um, you know, we're looking to kind of uh, separate out the, you know, the bus bar solution, right, to come up with specifications specifically for uh, the bus bar as a component and the rack as a component. Um, so that as we go forward, you should be able to mix and match uh, rack suppliers with bus bar suppliers, uh, depending upon who has the, you know, the voltage and, and height and uh, uh, that matches up with your particular needs. So it hopefully will add some additional flexibility and speed to the supply chain for, you know, kind of enabling uh, more point solutions out from, uh, from the industry. So that is an interesting point on, on point solutions. Did you want to add anything specifically about an x86 server that may, uh, may potentially work with this, Doug? Uh, at this time, probably not. <laughs> uh, the <coughs> server development and storage development and GPU development, I mean, that all, and switch development, that all continues. I mean, you'll see, I think you pointed out that if you walk the floor, you'll see some things in our booth, you'll see things in other booths, and you'll see vendors talking about various solutions. I, I think we'll have to see the specific technology that gets developed, but I would expect a relatively uh, robust set of offerings across servers and storage and GPUs and switches. Uh, obviously, one of the advantages is to basically see to what extent you can develop like enabling technology that allows a number of different things to operate in the rack. You know, purpose built for the rack is good, but having a switch that goes into a tray that, that attaches to the bus bar, you know, is a way to broaden the, the scope of IT gear that can be incorporated into the solution. But I think, uh, you know, over time as customers make their their demands known about the kinds of things that need to go into these racks that we'll see, we'll see uh, uh, providers like Hive or the original equipment manufacturers for certain switches and things of that sort, you know, we'll see more choice, we'll see more capability. And I can't predict what that's going to be in six months or 12 months because, you know, it'll probably look a lot different from what we see right now. But I assume there'll be a robust set of offerings that'll take advantage of the technology. I'd like to add one more point. Uh, talking about near future is that, uh, as the team said, you are <clears throat> seeing more and more trend on the higher powers. Actually, it's the domain that the 48 volt system makes more and shows more and more advantages in terms of efficiency, in terms of uh, power density, in terms of uh, possible cost reduction. Got it. Thank you. I think that's it for time. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Okay. Thank you to our panelists.